All right, let's uh, be ready to do some algebra. So here's a typical algebra problem. Solve for x, and we have the equation 8 minus x is equal to 3. Now, here's an important thing to note. Not only is this problem asking us to do a very algebraic thing to solve for x, but in addition to that, we want to prove the validity of each step. So we're going to go a little bit farther than we would in an ordinary algebra problem. The significance of that is that if you don't include the validity of each step, you have not actually solved the problem. So here's the general approach that we're going to take. Uh, we want to rely, first of all, on definitions and theorems. Anytime you see this term proof, there's a definition or theorem involved somehow. And in general, what we're going to try and do is to use these definitions and theorems to transform one equation into another equation, and ultimately we want to end up with an equation of the form x equals, and that's going to be our solution. So where can we start? Well, the first thing we might notice here is that we actually have a subtraction. So let's uh, go ahead and pull up our definition of subtraction. And so that's based on addition. If we know that a plus b is equal to c, then a is equal to c minus b, and conversely. Now that word conversely is fairly important because it means that I can reverse that definition. So let's go ahead and reverse that. And now I have suppose a is equal to c minus b, then a is equal to b, a plus b is equal to c. And I still have the conversely, I can still reverse it back to its original position. Now let's go ahead and compare our definition with what we have, and what do I see here? Well this a, this term all by itself on one side, must be 3. This term c, the thing that I am subtracting from, looks like it's going to be 8. And then finally, this term b, the amount I'm subtracting, is our unknown x. And so I can make that comparison and substituting those values into my definition of subtraction gives me my first step. And I might say something like the following. Since 8 minus x is equal to 3, then 8 is equal to 3 plus x. And that is mimicking exactly this definition of subtraction. So what's our next step? Well, we might consider that we actually have this addition here. We might think about, well, let's pull up the definition of addition. Uh, the problem here is that the definition of addition is based on sets, and it doesn't allow us to transform one equation into another equation. So as far as solving equations, that definition of addition isn't actually useful. On the other hand, we do have the commutative property of addition. So if I have two numbers a and b. If I ever see a plus b, I can immediately replace it with b plus a. Well, is this what we need? Well, we have to be careful because if we use this and we don't need it, well, then all sorts of bad things can happen. The internet will explode and the global economy will collapse. The polar caps will melt. Plagues of locusts will cover the... Well, actually, nothing really bad happens. If it doesn't work, we try something else. So I'll go ahead and apply the commutative property of addition, and I have a next step, which will hopefully take us towards solving the equation. So let's take a look at that. By the commutative property, I can take this 3 plus x, and I can rewrite it as x plus 3. Now, once again, we have an addition, but we don't want to use the definition of addition because that will not take us to a new equation. But we do note that addition is part of the definition of subtraction. But this time, we're starting with the addition, so we can start with the definition as it's written. So once again, we'll compare our definition of subtraction to the equation that we have written. And what do we see? Well, a, one of the terms being added, that's going to be x. b, the other term being added, that's 3. And then c, what we obtain, is going to be 8. And so now I'll use my definition of subtraction, and I can make for the next step. Since 8 is equal to x plus 3, then by the definition of subtraction, 8 minus 3 is equal to x. Now you might notice over on the left-hand side of our equation, we actually have this expression, 8 minus 3. And that's just a straightforward arithmetic computation, so I can do this without comment and arrive at our next statement. Consequently, x is equal to 5. 
And there is our solution to the equation. We've done what's been required. We've solved for x. x is equal to 5. And moreover, at each step, we've proven that the steps that we're taking are valid. We've given a justification for each of our steps. Definition, property, and definition. And again, just to reiterate that, if I want to write a complete answer to the question, I need to include everything that is here in this left column.